What's up everybody? So today's video is all about the practicality of the MCAT. And what I mean by this is actually telling you whether or not what you're studying for in your undergrad and even on the MCAT is actually relevant to medical school. And the reason I bring this up is because I get a lot of email from students asking, hey, I'm studying this, but I don't think it's relevant at all to medicine. So why should I study it? I feel not motivated at all. Like when is resistance or current ever gonna show up in medical school? And uh, today I just kinda wanna address that by telling you whether or not I honestly think the MCAT or even undergrad is useful for medical school, those undergrad pre-med courses. So without further ado, let's get started. So before I start, I want to give you a brief overview of how I'm going to structure this talk. I'm actually going to go ahead and first of all tell you my opinion on whether or not I think the MCAT is useful for medical school and even the undergrad pre-med requirements if they're useful for medical school and then I'm going to go a bit into substantiating that opinion. So first, let me start by telling you 100% I agree that the MCAT and your undergrad pre-med requirements are absolutely necessary and it's important for you to do well in them because I do think they will come up in medical school. All right, and I'm gonna show you this because I'm gonna go through each of the sections of the MCAT and show you how concepts of those come up again in medical school in different ways. Specifically, the four subjects I'm gonna go over are chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, and biology. Those were the four sections of the MCAT that, uh, that were on the MCAT when I took the MCAT. I know it's a bit different now, but I don't feel qualified to judge the new MCAT, so I'm gonna just judge those four subjects on the old MCAT. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is chemistry. Chemistry, you might think, is useless. I, I thought that a little bit, but now I see now those tenants are absolutely important for medical school. Let me give you some, I think I have three examples here. First one, solubility. You might think those KSP equations that you have to deal with in chemistry are stupid, and I will tell you right now, they are not. <laughs> and that's because everything in your body is a solution. You need to understand solubility to understand your body. If things are above or below certain concentrations in your body, you actually get disease. Hypokalemia, hypernatremia, hyponatremia, all of these things are either too little or too much sodium or potassium in your body, and that can actually give you disease. That's pathology. And you need to understand solubility to understand those diseases. Let me give you another example in solubility. Sometimes, if your blood stays still for too long, it clots and when it clots it creates this insoluble mass called a thrombus. That thrombus can unlodge and create an embolus that can ultimately go to your lungs and prevent you from breathing. That's another concept of solubility that you need to understand. And one of the ways you can get rid of this thrombus is by increasing its solubility. You can add in drugs that increase the solubility of this so that you don't get a solid thrombus and it dissolves in solution. Right? So understanding those tenets of solubility are absolutely imperative um, and they show up in medical school and that's why understanding that chemistry is also important. So the second concept that's absolutely imperative in chemistry that you will see again and again in medical school is the concept of equilibrium and I'm just going to give one example here because I want to move on into other things. It's just the aspect of acid-base chemistry guys. Think about acid-base, you might think, oh I don't care about any of that. Trust me, in med school you will because certain drugs will only work if they're protonated. Other drugs will only work if they're unprotonated. And the reason for that is you want these drugs to go to specific places in your body. If you want a drug to go to the brain, you probably don't want it to be protonated because it needs to cross the blood blood brain barrier. If you want a drug to go to your kidneys, you want it to be a particular pH to go to the kidneys and not to the stomach, right? There's particular facets of the drug you want to optimize and that is done through careful understanding of its equilibrium and its understanding of its acid-base properties, Henderson, Hasselbach, all that good stuff, okay? All right, let's move on to organic chemistry. I'm not going to spend as much time here. I will agree that some of the organic chemistry you learn might seem a bit irrelevant and retrospectively I would agree it is a bit relevant but you need those skills because, first of all, let me give you two examples. One, you need to be able to recognize and understand organic structures all the time. We see compounds on a daily basis in medical school that you're expected to know. That's an ester, that's a phenyl ring, that's a hydroxyl group, tertiary hydroxyl group. You need to know all of that stuff. You need to know what's polar, you need to know what's nonpolar. Okay, so all of those things are imperative aspects of organic chemistry and they show up all the time and we don't actually get a primer on any of them. We're just expected to know, oh, that's a sulfhydro group. Oh, that's a disulfide bond. You need to know those inside and out and I think organic chemistry does a really good job of addressing that on the MCAT. A second reason why organic chemistry is important is because of pharmacology in medical school. Pharmacology is knowing what drugs are what, like how drugs work, and certain receptors bind to certain drugs. Like for example, the difference between epinephrine and norepinephrine is a single methyl group. 
right? And if you don't know your organic chemistry, you might not understand what that means, and you also might not understand why epinephrine binds to particular receptors while norepinephrine binds to different receptors, because they do. They bind to different receptors with different affinities, and the only reason for that is that single methyl group. And that's all organic chemistry. You need to know why that methyl group makes a difference, why it changes the binding affinity for epinephrine versus norepinephrine. Right? So that's my spiel on organic chemistry. Let's talk about physics, which I know a lot of you think physics is not related to medicine at all. I don't know why I need to know it. False. Everything in your body works because of physics, okay? Let me give you an example. Blood flows from high pressure to low pressure, and that pressure equation is delta P equals flow times resistance. Okay, that's kind of like V equals IR, except it's, it's applicable to your entire body. The blood flows from my heart all the way down to the legs and back up to my heart because it follows a pressure gradient. It goes from the high pressure of your aorta all the way down to your legs where there's lower pressure, and then it comes back up and it follows this pressure gradient, and that is all physics. Any part of that that goes wrong, you can understand physically, okay? And that is absolutely important for you guys to get. There's so much physics. Uh, well, not so much, but there definitely is a decent amount of physics in medical school and also moving forward. Like EKGs, electrocardiograms, which you use to analyze the heart, that's all physics. You gotta know your physics. You gotta know your currents, you gotta know which way they're flowing. Your body is an electrical machine, you're in solution, which is another electric thing. So you need to know all of that. Uh, I'm not saying you have to be a physics master, but I do think a general understanding of physics will definitely benefit you because you will know how charges move, you'll know how charges interact, you'll know V equals IR, so that will help you understand the overall holistic aspect of the body and blood flow. I think it's really annoying when people say physics isn't related to medicine because I think physics is probably the, one of the best ways you have to understand medicine because physics is so concrete. It's based on math, it's based on facts. And when you try to understand a very abstract system like the human body, sometimes those facts don't hold up. But when you understand them through the lens of physics, it becomes a lot more discreet and a lot more understandable. And obviously, I don't have to preach biology. You guys know biology is probably the most important section on the MCAT and is directly relevant to the human body in so many ways. I shouldn't even have to go over them, but let me give you an example, right? Like understanding the kidney, understanding renin, and renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system, understanding hypertension. You need to understand that cold, okay? Because the biology on the MCAT is basic. It's so, so basic. And I don't mean that to be condescending. I'm saying it's at a very superficial level. And the problem with that is, if you don't understand that, medical school becomes really tough because they assume you do. Right now, we don't get any lecture saying, here's the AV node, here's the SA node. They don't give us that. They just say, here's how the AV node gets disease. Here's what happens when you have aortic regurgitation, aortic stenosis, aneurysms, dissections. All of that stuff is building on the knowledge you already have. If you don't have the knowledge, oh man, that gets really tough. So those are just some examples I have of why every section on the MCAT does still show up. And actually one of the biggest reasons I do think that if you do well in your undergrad classes and also do well in the MCAT, you will be really well primed for medical school. And again, I say this not because the MCAT score is what matters, it's because what the MCAT represents is what matters. You need to have your science done cold. When you come into med school, they do not spend any more time reviewing a lot of this stuff. They assume you know your basic chemistry, they assume you know your basic equilibrium, they assume you know all of this stuff, and they start moving really fast to build on it. And if your foundation is weak, you're gonna struggle, okay? So that's why knowing those things is important. And the last thing I will say is there, were, there are some general skills that the MCAT teaches you that you don't learn anywhere else. And that's another reason I really support the MCAT. First of all, the MCAT enforces a certain amount of memorization. You need to get stuff into your head, and it, it's a lot of stuff, but it needs to stay there. And if you think that's bad, Dude, that's medical school. That's all of medical school. Medical school every day is getting this much amount of information into my head, and it's so much every day. Every day. Then the second reason the MCAT's good is putting things in context. You gotta learn how to do that in medical school, and you'll, the MCAT really helps with that. You know, you'll start seeing how the kidney interacts with the heart. You'll start seeing how the heart interacts with the brain. You'll see how the brain interacts with your foot. There's all of these things that are moving, and the MCAT helps you contextualize that, and that is so important in medical school. That's something I still struggle with on a daily basis, because I'm like, why do I care about this? And then I realized like, oh, a heart problem can lead to kidney ischemia. A kidney ischemia can lead to a foot problem and edema. Like there's so many things that are interacting. MCAT helps you piece those together. And the more you start realizing the whole body as a unit, the more successful you'll be. So my small rant on why I think undergrad pre-med requirements are absolutely valid. And another rant on why I think the MCAT is absolutely a great tool for you to help 
uh, put things together and why I think you should take it seriously. I know some of you definitely will come back with the counter of like, hey, there's all this other stuff that totally isn't relevant. And I do agree. There's a, there's some stuff in undergrad that I think was relevant, but those few pre-med requirements that I just went over are important. And even though those specific things, you might think they're specifics that aren't important, learning them will definitely never hurt you. They will only help you. So I strongly suggest you take it seriously. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Drop a like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for supporting me. We're at 3,500, which is mind blowing. Uh, next goal, I guess, is 5,000. So let's do it. Make it happen, homies. See you in the next video. Follow me on Snapchat if you don't already. Peace.